What is going on, beautiful people? It is Bet Slam with Sam, and we are doing the UFC Fight Night Abu Dhabi full card breakdown. I am going to take a big sip of water here because I'm a thirsty boy, and this is going to be a long breakdown. Starting things off, we have Cedric Dumas taking on Dennis Tululin. Guys, Cedric Dumas came off of Dana White's Contender Series, had a very quick finish where he found the submission in round one early on in the fight, has then since gone on to have mixed results, you know, losing to Josh Friend, but beating the likes of Cody Brundage and that other dude that's name is escaping me right now. But the point being is that Cedric Dumas has had mixed results, but he's beaten the lower end of the competition. He's shown some potential. He is a bit of a street brawler looking guy. I mean, you know, not the profile, but looking at Cedric Dumas, covered in the tattoos. He's got, what, hood rat tattooed on him. You know, the dude likes to smoke weed. Uh, but I, in behind all of that, he showcased some skill. You know, he has shown that he's got okay takedowns. He's got pretty quick hand speed. And while his striking isn't the prettiest, it does find the mark. I do think that Cedric Dumas in this spot is a pretty safe bet. He is minus 218 to come back on Dennis Tillerman at plus 180. Dennis Tillerman, 11 and 9 fighter. Uh, 11 and 9 is not a good record to have. And while you may excuse some of his losses, it's not exactly like he's going out and giving everybody a tough fight. He comes forward, he tries to finish you with pressure, and if that doesn't work, he gets crumpled. Uh, you know, it's happened in multiple fights now. It happened against CLD. Dennis Tolulin is not good everywhere. If he gets taken down, often he looks like a fish out of the water, gets stuck on his back. And while Cedric Dumas does, I believe, have the advantage in the striking, I think that his easiest path to victory here is to simply take down Dennis Tolulin, ride out the rounds. Cedric Dumas needs to win here. You know, uh, he's not, he doesn't have a big fan base. He needs to get the wins. And uh, if Dennis Tolulin has an 11 10 record, he's getting cut from the UFC. I don't care how likable the guy is. Uh, they don't have losing record fighters chilling out in the UFC, which is what he'd be on his way to being. And, uh, you know, Cedric Dumas in this spot, this is a, a, a great fight for him. I think it's a very, very winnable matchup. Uh, and I will be betting Cedric Dumas here. Then we have Jai Herbert taking on Rolando Bedoya. Uh, Jai Herbert coming up to welterweight, I believe. It says lightweight bout here, but I'm fairly fairly confident this is going to be taking place at uh, at welterweight. But if it's not, um, then uh, I'd be very confused because Rolando Bedoya now uh, two fights deep into his UFC career at welterweight. Uh, Jai Herbert has spent the majority of his career at lightweight and uh, is 36 years old now, something I do want to point out. Jai Herbert is famously known for the guy who almost knocked out Ilya Taporia. Uh, and almost being the key word because he didn't knock him out. And then very soon after that moment proceeded to get absolutely fucking crumpled on the canvas. Very similar to how Alexander Volkanovsky did. Jai Herbert is, you know, I've already done a breakdown on this video. If you guys want to see a full breakdown of this this fight in particular, Jai Herbert and Rolando Bedoya. I do already have a breakdown of this fight uh, as my underdog opportunity of the week. Uh, I will be picking Rolando Bedoya. Jai Herbert, mini Leon Edwards, not much else to say about the dude. He's a good striker, but he's not threatening. Like he doesn't he doesn't scare me watching him. He doesn't scare his opponents. Uh, and I think Rolando Bedoya, having just dealt with the likes of Chaos Williams and almost being able to finish him late in that third round, I think he is going to be able to get in Jai Herbert's face here, throw strikes down the middle, and even if Jai starts touching Bedoya up early, I don't think he's going to put him out, and I think Bedoya will just walk through fire here and uh, just keep pumping out the strikes. I think that Rolando Bedoya is going to stack up the numbers, and he's going to win by KO or decision. He is one of my favorite dogs on this card, and so definitely uh, have some sprinkling on the Bedoya side here. I'm taking Rolando Bedoya, to win this fight uh, by decision. My official prediction is Rolando Bedoya by decision. Then we got Victoria Dudakova taking on Sam Page Hughes. Uh, Sam Hughes just doesn't impress me at all. Eight and six record. If you go back and watch her fights, she's lackluster as hell. She has some finishes on her record. And I say it in that manner because if you watch Sam Hughes fight, that, that finish that she got against Elise Reed, she was on top landing some strikes, but there was... Almost no impact on them, and the ref said fight back. But I'm like, fight back against what? It looked like somebody's sibling was just sitting on them, slapping them in the face. 
Uh, Victoria Dudakova is not going to go out like that. And I think she's going to win more minutes. She's probably going to dominate this fight in the grappling. And while people have voice concerns for Dudakova's defensive grappling, I don't think it's going to come to play because I think she's going to get Sam Hughes down early and often in this matchup. Give me Victoria Dudakova to win this fight by decision. Then we've got Guram Kutaladze taking on UFC newcomer Jordan Vucinic. If you don't know who Jordan Vucinic is, don't worry, you're not a casual. Uh, the dude is coming over from Cage Warriors. He's a heavily tattooed fella, jiu-jitsu specialist, who's striking, while you might think it looks okay, it's against lesser competition, and he only does well when he has a reach and size advantage. Uh, Guram Kutaladze, a giant guy, he's fighting for his roster spot here. I, I mean... Fights out of a great camp. I love watching Gurum fight, and uh, he's all but won. A few of his matchups now just missed the mark. I think this is going to be a showcase for him. Jordan Vucinic might be a guy in the future, but I think in this spot here, with Gurum's back up against the wall, Gurum Kutaladze is not going to overextend himself. He's going to stay within his lane, and he's going to get the decision or KO victory over Jordan Vucinic. Give me the Georgian Viking Gurum to win this fight. That is my official prediction. Then we've got Shamil Gaziev. Guys, big boy Shamil let me the fuck down against Jazinia Rosenstrike, but I think it was a case of too bright lights, you know? It was uh, too much too soon. Shamil Gaziev is a big striker. He fights out of Dagestan, you know, the beast of Bahrain, as they call him. And, uh, you know, he has hands ready to eat for everybody. He does come forward, have pretty clean boxing. And uh, when he gets on top of you, though, his grappling just snowballs, man. If he gets on top of Dante Mays, I don't think Dontel Mays gets up. I truly don't. I think that Shamil Ghazi finishes the fight if he gets one single takedown where he gets into mount. So give me Shiz Shamil Ghazi. I think this is a bounce back spot here. Lord Kong, I did also break down this fight in great depth on the channel. Uh, you know, when we do the quick picks like this, I don't always bust through because not everybody wants to know full reasoning. They want to know my picks. The fans in here want to know who I'm betting on, who I'm picking. And in this one, I am taking Shamil Gaziev. I think that he clocks Dontel Mays on the feet. I think that he gets on top of him in the grappling. And Lord Kong just hasn't shown an ability to put it together. I mean, you know, big giant dude, 81 inch reach, six foot six, you know, looks the part, never puts it together. So give me Gaziev. I think in this part of the world, uh, in this geo location, I think Gaziev just is in a cannot lose position. And even at minus 230, I think uh, he's going to get it done. Then we've got Mohamed Yaya taking on Cal Fernandez. Guys, this breakdown is not going to be complex. Mohamed Yaya got out wrestled by Trevor Peak. Trevor Peak is not a good fighter. Trevor Peak is entertaining. Trevor Peak is a fun brawler to watch. He shouldn't be out wrestling anybody. If you're getting out wrestled by Trevor Peak for the entirety of a fight, you probably don't deserve a UFC roster spot. If Muhammad Yaya did not come from the United Arab Emirates, he wouldn't be on this card. Cal Fernandez absolutely has to be the pick. And while neither of these guys has a win under the UFC banner, I think that Cal Fernandez will pick it up over Muhammad Yaya here. I think all he has to do is wrestle and grapple early and often, and he'll get a decision victory here. So give me Cal Fernandez to win this fight by decision. Then we have Azamat Mirzakhanov taking on Alonzo Menafield. Alonzo Menafield bum-rushed. He ran across the cage at my boy, Carlos Olberg, and got himself KO'd in 12 seconds. That fight IQ is fucking atrocious. Why on earth you would just rush across? Like He literally lost his footing, rushed straight into Carlos Olberg, and got himself KO'd in seconds. So Alonzo Menafield has to be questioned in this spot here. Azamat Mirzakhanov never lost. Even though Alonzo Menafield is going to have the size advantage, the striking advantage, and the technique lies absolutely with Azamat Mirzakhanov. Give me the undefeated Russian in this spot. And, uh, you know, I think that Mirzakhanov is just going to be too much, and he's going to dismantle Alonzo Menafield. Give me Azamat Mirzakhanov to win by knockout. Then we have Joel Alvarez taking on Elves Brenner. This is a great fight. This potentially has Fight of the Night written all over it. It also has the potential for Joel Alvarez to get takedowns and just hold Elves Brenner down. So be careful and mindful of that, especially if Elves Brenner tries to play the jiu-jitsu game off his back. Uh, Joel Alvarez gives up takedowns in the UFC. 
almost at will. It's almost like he just wants you to take him down because his jujitsu is so good and he submits absolutely fucking everybody. He is six foot two. He's a giant lightweight, you know, up there with the Jalen Turners of the world, 70 inch, 77 inch reach. I just talked about a heavyweight having 81 inches. So 77 inch reach at lightweight is disgusting. Joel Alvarez striking is actually quite fun to watch. He finishes most of his combinations with a leg kick. Uh, you know, he mixes it up well. He blends the MMA arts together. He can strike, you know, but his bread and butter, as I say, is in his submission game. Now, Els Brenner fights out of the Charles Oliveira camp. You know, he's fighting down there. They do hard sparring. Those guys all have great jujitsu, and he's got heart for days. He's as tough as hell. He came back against Guram Kutaladze with that third round finish when Guram was winning almost all of the fight, and Els Brenner never quits on himself. This guy, Elves Brenner, I do believe is the public dog of the week for UFC Abu Dhabi. But I'm on the Spaniard here. Give me Joel Alvarez, man. I think that being six foot two, having the jiu-jitsu game that he does and good striking, how can you not pick this guy? I love watching him fight. I think that Elves Brenner uh, beats other people, absolutely, and I'm looking forward to taking him as an underdog again in the future. But I like Joel Alvarez in this spot, man. Even at almost minus 200, I'm taking Joel Alvarez to win this fight. My official prediction is actually by decision. I think that he wins more minutes here and uh, gets it over on Elvis Brenner. Then we have Mackenzie Dern taking on Lupita, a.k.a. Lupi Godinez. At the time of recording this, Lupi Godinez is a slight dog uh, with the comeback on Mackenzie Dern at about a minus 100 favorite. Uh, Mackenzie Dern, man, what is there to say? Great ass, terrible fight IQ. Uh, Mackenzie Dern, man, she is just, she just doesn't put it together. And everyone wanted to be a believer of Mackenzie Dern after her performance against Angela Hill, and she just came back after that with that childlike striking, swinging wildly, head down, looking weird. And her takedowns, man, people are saying they're improving, but they're still bad. They're still awful. Mackenzie Dern being the favorite in the spot is untouchable. If you're taking Mackenzie Dern, just bet the sub. You know, that's that's her path to victory here. She's not going to outstrike Loopy. Don't don't give me that narrative. She's not going to outgrapple Loopy in the takedown department. It's only submissions. The only submission threats and submissions that Mackenzie Dern has the upside here. Otherwise, the competitive edge, everything else, all has to be given to Lupe Godinez. And I think that Lupe Godinez is going to win this fight by either KO or decision. I love her at underdog pricing. I've already placed a $100 bet on her, and uh, I'm all over Lupe Godinez. So give me Lupe to win against Mackenzie Dern here. Official prediction, Lupe Godinez by decision. Then we got Tony Ferg, the ghost of El Kikui, taking on Michael Chiesa. Uh, this is two pretty washed out guys, man. This is, is honestly like, this is two guys who, when I first started watching the sport, were like at their peak. And I've been watching a while now, you know? I've been watching for so long now that uh, eventually I, I thought I knew enough about the sport to start a fucking YouTube channel talking about how to bet on it. So if you, <laughs> if you like either of these guys in that spot, more power to you. Uh, it says right now, come back on Tony Ferguson plus 525 underdog. Minus 750 on Michael Kiesa. The odds are unplayable. Um, I know I know you want to put Tony Ferguson in your parlays, in your, your lottery tickets, all the rest of it. The reality is Tony Ferguson has looked like a shell of himself, and every fight he deteriorates further and further. He can't take damage like he used to, and one of his best attributes was his submission capability added with his good chin. And if you take either of those things away, the other just doesn't seem as good on its own. Tony Ferguson hasn't subbed anybody in what seems like forever. Uh, he hasn't won a fight in almost record amount of fights, you know. If he loses this one, he's going to have the longest losing streak in UFC history. It, when you think of all these things, the numbers make sense. But then you look at his opponent. Michael Chiesa looked like garbage in his last fight. Michael Chiesa looked like he did not belong in the UFC when he last took on Kevin Holland. And now a large portion of time has gone on, and since then he hasn't beaten anybody. So... What is there to believe that Michael Chiesa can be the man to come out and beat a faded Tony Ferguson? The reality is that neither of these guys should be in your betting slips. If you do want to bet on this fight, I would probably take Michael Chiesa to win this fight by decision. He is larger. He has been fighting at welterweight for longer. He's got the bigger frame. 
I don't think there's going to be much striking going on in this fight because Tony Ferguson is going to believe that he's going to submit Michael Chiesa if it goes to the ground. So he's almost going to not put up resistance to get there, which means that Michael Chiesa can probably just blanket him for three whole rounds, maybe threaten a submission. But if I'm Michael Chiesa, just take the win. You don't want to be the guy that lost to Tony Ferguson after he was snapping his six-fight losing streak. So give me Michael Chiesa to win this fight by decision. That is my official prediction. As for the betting, don't bet on this fight. Don't put either of these guys in your parlay. Don't do it. Just, just watch it. Just grab some popcorn. Grab some snacks. Watch the fight. It is what it is, you know? Then we've got Marlon Chito Vera versus Davison Figueredo. I have been scratching my fucking brain all morning long thinking about this fight. I just watched Marlon Vera versus Sean O'Malley. I watched Marlon Vera versus uh, Corey Sanhagen. I watched Davison Figueredo versus Rob Font. I watched Davison Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. I have been picking my brain over this matchup, and it has been doing my head in. Because while I want to pick... Davison Figueredo because he's put together a nice two-fight win streak. He's come up. He's looked good at this weight class. His grappling has been the edge that has got him to, to where he is. I can't get past the fact that, you know, Cheeto Vera is pretty much unbreakable, you know, so you're not going to knock him out. If Davison Figueredo knocks him out, nobody would have seen that coming. Uh, and then when it comes to submissions, you know, nobody's been submitting Cheeto Vera either. So then you're going to say, okay, Davison Figueredo is going to blanket Marlon Chito Vera for three rounds with his grappling, which we haven't fucking seen before. And then you're going to say the guy who's just coming to the division has fought two guys that Chito Vera has beaten one of them and would beat the other guy. And you want to tell me that he is the favorite? I mean, I know we just saw Chito Vera get his fucking ass mollywopped by the best version of Sean O'Malley that we have ever seen. But my God, man, this is still Chito Vera. This is still the guy that is unbreakable, still the guy that can find a finish at any point in the fight. He's dangerous. He's bigger. I got to go with the Ecuadorian. And when I watched uh, his pre-fight press conference today, he looked as clear as ever. He held up his responsibilities for his losses. He took it like a champ. He gave a realistic point of view of where he is in his career. And he gave props to Davis and Figueredo being a good fighter. So... There was no sense of delusion. Marlon Chito Vera is just a warrior, a great human being, and he is the bigger man in this matchup, and I think that's going to be enough. I think that he's going to get it done over Davis and Figueredo and hand Figgy his first loss at Bantamweight. Give me Marlon Chito Vera to win this fight by decision. Then we have Shara Bugat, not Bugat, Shara Bullet, Magomedov, taking on Michael Oleg Jacek. Initially, when I saw this fight, I thought, I got to bet Michael Olajajic by KO. Because Shara Magomedov has one fucking eye. The dude is hittable. And while his striking is phenomenal, everyone likes to talk about how good it is. Defensively, he leaves a lot to be desired. And if you want somebody to come in and crowd a kickboxer and throw their hands and let them go, that is Michael Olajajic. This is the fighter that you want in this matchup. I don't think it fucking matters, though. I think Shara Magomedov, he's got aura. This dude is just... I, I can't bet against him, man. Especially the Russian in Abu Dhabi. I can't do it, man. I got to go with Shara Magomedov. My official prediction is he gets a KO in round two or round three. I think he starts working those kicks to the body, to the leg, breaks Michael Olenjacek systematically and finds the late finish. So give me Shara. Give me the Pirate to win by knockout. Then we've got Corey Sandhagen, the Sandman, taking on Umar Nurmagomedov. I just want to start this off by going, Umar Nurmagomedov is not Khabib. He's not even Islam. Umar is a great fighter, but he is not a world beater. And he might be world champion one day. He isn't there yet. And if he beats Corey Sanhagen, sure, I'll be willing to say that this guy deserves a title shot. At his current resume, absolutely not. He's had great performances, but against absolute fucking nobodies. Who the fuck is Umar Nurmagomedov beat on? And don't start looking it up on Google. You gotta tell me who Umar's actually beaten. Because a lot of you scratch your head and go, fuck, I don't, I don't remember what the hell was that that those, I don't know, maybe it's from Kazakhstan. You know, who who was the guy he last beat? Exactly. Umar Nurmagomedov is he's riding a phenomenal win streak, and that is why he is where he is. But this is his battle test. And to be a minus three or five favorite 
the comeback on Corey Sanhagen is like plus 250 right now. I took a bet on him at plus 200 because I was like, holy shit, Corey Sanhagen at plus 200? Corey Sanhagen is an absolute student of the game. He lives this fucking life. And I know that Umar does as well. But Corey Sanhagen, 5'11", phenomenal frame, proven track record in five-round fights in this division. He has beaten most of the top of the division, you know? And even when he tore his tricep last time out, he still put on a 50-45 performance. You know, won that fight by unanimous decision. Every single round, it was a shutout. We have not seen Corey Sanhagen be wrestle-fucked. So to assume that Umar can simply do it just because he's done it to others is not absolutely correct. When we've never seen Umar Nurmagomedov wrestle somebody of the caliber of Corey Sanhagen four or five rounds. How's his cardio going to look? How's he going to strike later on in the fights? How's he going to deal with somebody with the reach and height advantage that Corey Sanhagen does? I think that Sanhagen at plus 245 is the single greatest value on this card. And I have to go with the Sandman here. I fucking love Corey Sanhagen, so there's a little bit of bias there. But I'm also a big Khabib Nurmagomedov fan. So you can't tell me that I'm a hater on Umar here simply because he's his little cousin or whatever. I just think the value is all over Corey Sanhagen here. And for my official pick for this fight, I'm going Corey Sanhagen to win this fight by knockout. That is the breakdown, guys. That is that is the entire breakdown. We have picked all of the fights, and I'm going to be doing my slam of the week, my official bet card, all the rest of it. But this is a quick picks video, so that if you just wanted to know who I'm picking, bets aside, all the rest, if I was picking... This is who we got. This is a great fucking fight card. For a free fight card, if you are missing this one, you are missing out. It has all the names that you could ever want, especially for the location. We got the Nemergamados, we got Gaziev, we got all other, the Evs and the Ovs, and we got some great matchups. I'm looking forward to it, and I think we're going to make some fucking money. So stay tuned for that bet card. I'll see you all at the cash counter.